A judge's work is never easy. A judge rules on a case-by-case -case basis, and in some instances, that judge might have to look at the black and white letter of the law. But in other cases, he might need to reflect on the spirit of that law in which it was written. Take, for example, an angry spouse who knows not to touch his wife for fear of committing domestic violence. What if this husband instead, when he is angered, destroys items in the house in his rage? Could a judge find him guilty of domestic violence even though he did not lay one finger on his wife? That's a difficult case for a judge. Some might say, as long as he did not touch her, he cannot and should not be arrested for domestic law or domestic violence as the law stipulates. Still others might say he's created a violent environment and that it's unsafe for his wife to be in it and there should, should be arrested. After all, he's terrified her and she does not feel safe in her own home. We find this sort of tension in the law in today's gospel reading. The Pharisees have taken a hard-nosed stance on the law of the Sabbath. You shall do no work on the Sabbath. If you do, there will be consequences within the community for you. Jesus, on the other hand, speaks to the spirit of the law. It's intention, in other words, God's intention, a field in which he just happens to be an expert in. Jesus states that the whole point of the Sabbath law was that it was made for the benefit of man and argues that man was not made to serve the Sabbath law. So the question one might ask and should ask after reading this gospel and the question that this sermon will focus upon is, are you keeping the Sabbath law or is the Sabbath keeping you? The law is a tricky thing for Christians. We want to be considered well-pleasing in the eyes of God. We are taught in this world that when we do the right things, we will be rewarded. Therefore, we wish to do the law correctly and be seen as good in God's eyes. Therefore, we look to God's commands and make a checklist. Don't commit murder. Check. Haven't killed anyone today. Don't commit adultery. Got my wife sitting right here beside me. Don't steal. Hey, that collection plate went by. I saw that $100 bill. I let it go. Don't covet. Check. I'm content with what I have. For the most part. Sort of. It doesn't obsess me. No one really knows what I'm thinking right now, right? We know from passages such as Matthew 5 that just having ill feelings towards our brother or looking upon someone with lust, we've already broken these commands consistently and repeatedly. Focusing on following the letter of the law enslaves us. We also enslave ourselves to the Sabbath when we regard the letter of the law as an absolute at the expense of God's intention. The Pharisees tried to hold Jesus and his disciples to an interpretation of the law that went beyond God's intent. The disciples were hungry. According to a Jewish law, one could pluck the heads of grain off another man's field as long as they did not put the sickle to his crops. That's found in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 25. Jesus argues further and points out that even when King David and his men were hungry, King David pleaded with the high priest in the temple for the bread of presence. That holy bread that was put in the Holy of Holies one Sabbath 
and stayed there for a week to be in God's presence and then only to be eaten by the priests on the next Sabbath. That bread was given to King David and his men because they were hungry. Sometimes we, like those Pharisees, also have tendencies like this. That is, to focus on things that on the, on the surface are not wrong, but our focus happens to be in the wrong direction. Have you ever been taken aback when you find a visitor in your seat that your family for generations have been sitting in? Have you ever been taken aback when somebody comes to the divine service in an outfit that you deem to be not reverent? Oh no, the pastor is wearing an alb. Oh no, the pastor's not wearing an alb. Oy vey! Are you keeping the Sabbath law or is it keeping you? We could also misuse the Sabbath throughout the week. How many of you are more concerned with this congregation than the rest of the community and the pain that is in the world? How many of you stay isolated in this church bubble because it's easier than dealing with all the mess and the hurt outside those doors? We can also misuse the Sabbath when we are focused on our individual rights, but neglect our individual responsibilities. We misuse the Sabbath when we are more concerned with being loved than loving our neighbor. When we misuse the Sabbath in these ways, what we really are doing is denying Christ. But fortunately, we don't have a worldly judge like I referred to in the beginning of this sermon. We have a perfect judge who gave us a perfect and good law for our benefit. God's intention is not so much we keep the Sabbath law, but that the Sabbath keep us. The Sabbath was created for your benefit. Yes, keeping the Sabbath is a law, but it is a perfect law given to you by God so that it can be a great benefit to you. Jesus reaffirms this in verse 27 of our gospel reading. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Jesus served his disciples by defending them against the Pharisees. He knows their hunger and sees that they take care of their physical needs. He uses King David as a twofold example. First, Jesus explains that the Sabbath is meant to serve people. And secondly, that loving in a godly way is more important than enforcing regulations. The disciples were hungry. David was hungry. Is it not loving to care for the physical needs of those that are hungry? Shall we deny them food because of a certain regulation? Your bodies need to be taken care of, and that's the intent of the Sabbath. Your bodies need rest, but so do your souls. Your soul is more important than your body, and there must be an emphasis to care for it. You keep holy and remember the Sabbath when you do works of love, even if that work happens to land on the Sabbath itself. Was it not love that motivated Jesus to heal the withered hand of the man? Was Christ's compassion supposed to stop because of some rule? Some of you might be asking yourself, but my job doesn't allow me to come to the divine service every Lord's Day. Am I not keeping the Sabbath? A wise man once told me, that's not the right question. The right question is, how can the Sabbath keep me? 
The Sabbath keeps you when you hear God's words spoken to you through the readings. The Sabbath keeps you when you hear faithful and biblical preaching. The Sabbath keeps you when you receive absolution in the divine service. The Sabbath keeps you when you receive forgiveness of sins, when you receive Christ's body and blood at this altar. The Sabbath keeps you when you realize the divine service is about receiving Christ in all of these ways. Keeping the Sabbath is not supposed to be a drudgery. The Sabbath is keeping you from being ground down by the wickedness of the world. It keeps you holy by setting you apart from the world one day out of the seven in the week. So what do I do if my job doesn't allow me to come every Sunday? Does your job keep you from doing this for long periods of time? If so, this might be a problem. Is this the only occupation that will take care of your family? If not, maybe you're in the wrong vocation. Your occupation is not more important than sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ. Pray on this and seek God's wisdom through the word and find a way to make the Sabbath an important part of your life. Why? Because the Sabbath keeping you is of great benefit to you. You receive Christ in the divine service. And it should be a priority for all believers to set this apart one day of the week to receive him. God's intention with all of his commands is to care for you, to care for your body and to care for your soul. He loves you in a way that is not fully knowable. The small catechism states it from our perspective. We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and learn from it and hear it. But put another way, from God's perspective, I, God, want you to realize my power and authority, but I also want you to realize the love that I have for you that was manifested that I died for you and for all of mankind. Know me, read my word, be uplifted and joyful when you hear my word preached. It is good for you to do so. Keeping the Sabbath involves hearing the word. When you hear his word, faith comes from that. Paul writes that in 1017 in the book of Romans. Why, oh why, would you ever limit yourself to hearing the word one hour of the week? When you do, the other 167 hours of the week are filled with the word of the world. The Sabbath is meant to be a pause from the world, from the grind of your labors in the world. The Sabbath is meant to hear Christ speak to you. The Sabbath is meant to know God through what he has revealed about himself through his word. The Sabbath is meant to have Christ abide in you, to receive him as we do when we partake the body and blood at the altar. When you immerse yourselves in his word, you see the love and compassion he has for you. You see that not just this commandment, but all of them boil down to two. Love your God with all your heart, your mind, and strength. And the second, love your neighbor as yourself. The law, while driving us to despair to realize how far apart we actually are from him, also shows us how to love him and our neighbor. When you immerse yourselves in his word, it is not just the law that shows God's love for you. You also see, like, unlike any other religion in the world, 
which is their duty to try to be like their God, our loving triune God comes to you. For you and for your salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became human. He was crucified for you. He suffered death for you. He was buried for you. Three days later, he rose from the dead for you. And today he sits at the right hand of the Father for you. This is what remembering the Sabbath, by keeping it holy, that means separate from the world means. It means that we receive God. We receive him every Lord's day through remembering our baptism, through forgiveness of our sins, through his word, and through the sacrament of the altar. But throughout the week, we remember the Sabbath. We keep it holy when we immerse ourselves in the word, when we love him with our hearts and minds, and when we love our neighbors as ourselves. All of this we have heard through his word read to us and preached to us each Lord's Day. So I ask one more time, are you keeping the Sabbath law or is the Sabbath keeping you? It is my prayer that the Sabbath is keeping you for your benefit. Let Christ come to you. Receive him every Lord's Day during the divine service. Let your faith come from the hearing of his word. Let your souls be rejuvenated from the grind of this world with the reception of Christ in his forgiveness, in his word, and through his sacraments. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.